Now, rental arbitrage sounds like a fancy word, rental arbitrage. but in essence, it's not. It's just essentially convincing your landlord to let you rent out your house or apartment on Airbnb. And the hardest part is finding a landlord that would actually let you do that. And now that has changed with Airbnb's new partnership agreement, Airbnb Friendly Apartments. Let's talk about it. Nice flipping choice. What's up folks, it's Garrett from the Nice Flipping Choice channel back again with another short term rental, AKA Airbnb video. And now Airbnb did have a pretty big announcement this week that I know is going to interest a lot of you because about 70% of you asked me about rental arbitrage. Now I am no expert in this field because I have only done it one time in my life, but being a real estate agent and investor for the past five plus years, I've seen a lot of the dynamics that go into it. Rental arbitrage is tricky because usually finding a place that will allow you to put it on Airbnb after after you sublease it basically, it's gonna take a pretty salesy approach to make it happen. Think sell sell, sell me this fucking pen right here. You can sell anything, sell that. Go ahead. Sell me that pen. Can I finish eating first? I need today. You're gonna to have to convince the landlord to let you rent out your place, keep it even more maintained than others, probably have to pay more upfront than some others, and ease their worries about random people coming through their places at any time. Now, this can be very tricky for a lot of you. One thing I know that is not tricky though is hitting that subscribe button for me one time. Now, Airbnb announced its Airbnb apartment friendly program this week. Now, I'm not 100% certain on how a lot of the things work, but I have been doing some research on it just to let my clients know some of these opportunities and also let you, the viewer, know some of them as well too. Now I can imagine it would drive some of the places up in rent, especially if a lot of investors start just getting units in some of these places. And right now the cities are minimal that do this, but we'll look at the page that they sent me, check out some of the options, go over some of the ways that it may even work for you, and we'll talk about it. As we go through, we can kind of check out what's what are some of the things they offer. They have a few different locations as you can see here, a few, a few different places, a lot of them obviously more major cities. You can browse which one, find out how much you earn, I'll get into that as well. And I didn't even see this earlier, to help you contact the places you like. That's interesting. I'm sure they get a piece of that, but hey, you know, they're, they're here to, this is the service they're providing. So a couple questions just to go over that they put in there too. Does Airbnb own or operate these buildings? No, that's obviously partnerships. How often can you rent your place? It's up to you. You can host for one month or once a year. It all depends on local laws and building rules. Yep, I can understand that. Probably got to talk to the person that runs the building to get all that information if you don't know. They set community rules such as quiet hours that all guests need to follow. Airbnb has a strict no party policy. And there's a few other things things they do. How do you get paid straight through Airbnb? And do they offer this outside? No, at the moment they don't. Some of the cities they have, they have quite a few. How many is this? Probably, I don't know, 35 maybe? Minnetonka, that's a Minnetonka. So let's do Houston and then see, cause that's where my hometown is. Let's see what they got to offer. One thing I noticed earlier, I was looking at a lot of these, is there's a lot more than I was expecting to be on here. I mean, even just scrolling, that's probably, pretty fast scroll. That's probably 20, 30 properties right there. But let's look at some of the information they give. They give you the starting monthly rent possibly, and then they give you the average earnings per week. That's a guess. Now you can click on the little eye next to it and understand how they're estimating this earnings. They go into a few different criteria, but basically they take their information that they already have, bedrooms that have been rented out similar, properties that have been rented out with similar bedrooms in a similar area. They take some of these estimates and they'll give you an idea of what you could possibly make. They're probably gonna inflate it a little bit just because it would make sense for them to do that, but take that you know, with a grain of salt from me. One thing to note about it is the weekly earnings that they're estimating for you, that does take out the Airbnb fee, which is good. And then they also take out if there's any share of the revenue that the building takes, which I figured the building would be involved in this as well too. They don't subtract, it says here, for taxes or hosting expenses, which can be pretty costly, especially if you have to pay a different tax within your city because you're operating it as an Airbnb and you wanna do it legally. The building manager might make you register it that way. I haven't done this, I can't personally say, and each city and each building manager is gonna be different. Definitely take this into account before you go and get one of these places with the fact that you need to figure out your hosting expenses as well. You have things like supplies, utilities, don't forget that as well, furnishings, other things like that that will go into it and could eat into your income or your cash on cash return. So even we just kind of look at a few of them. This one says you can start out about 1400 and make about $400 a week. You're gonna lose money. So I'm not really sure why you would do that. This one, 1800, they say you're gonna make four, you know, 468, you would say we round up to 500. You might break even on that one. You know, so some of these deals are not gonna be something ideal. There's a couple of them. This one says 1600, 
you might make 500 a week. So that one might not be bad. You might make 100 to 200 bucks. Thing that I've never really liked with rental arbitrage, these are just my investment goals in real estate, is you're not gonna get any of the upside that comes with owning property if you actually do this. So yeah, if you're barely breaking even on this or barely making any money, that can make way more sense when you're actually paying down a mortgage. But when you're paying rent on something, it's not gonna make a ton of sense. Now this would really only be a good option if you can find the right place. Make sure you have a good interior design eye, take really professional photos, you're a great host, and if you happen to leave or have another place to stay, this can make some more sense for you because then you can kind of maybe block off times you want to stay here. Some of these numbers just kind of quickly going over them, they're going to be tough to get any profitability out of them. There's a couple that you might make a few hundred bucks a month. That's going to be probably pushing it. I'm not going to lie to you. So like I said, take this with a grain of salt, like this one right here. It says you're going to spend a thousand starting rent and you're going to make a 500. Yeah. Now if that actually worked out and you're making seven, 800 cash flow, and you get a few different units like this. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're probably close to it, but not forgetting about these utilities and other expenses you're going to have are going to eat into all this profit. And you might be under the water with this and then just have a place that's barely making the money. And then you're actually paying on it and you're barely staying there and back and forth. So figure this out yourself. It works for you. My advice would be keep finding other places that you could possibly work with. This isn't a bad way to kind of get your feet in the fire and kind of start get going without too much upfront capital and see where you can build it from there. So I'm never going trying all these different types of ways. That's one reason why I like real estate a lot is because it's so diverse and there's so many ways to figure out how to make a dollar. I think it's pretty smart for the apartments because they can get a share of this revenue, but we'll see how it plays out with their long-term residents actually going forward. Let me know in the comments what you think about all this and everything else going forward. Until next video, I'll see y'all then. Peace.